Greetings from Columbia, South Carolina, the Colonial Life Arena, your site for the Class 4A state championship between Lexington and Gaffney. Hello, everybody. I'm Birch Antley, joined by Emerson Phillips and John Combs, the head basketball coach at Ridgeview High School. Emerson Phillips, a crowd of over 10,000 filtering into this arena. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Lexington Wildcats. Lexington Wildcats and our head coach, Bailey Harris, your lower state champs. Starting lineup for Lexington, senior David Burns averaging 20 a game over the last three playoff contests. The outstanding sophomore Shaq Rowland and a trio of seniors, Adrian Wigfall, Corey Hendren, and Matt Jurgensen. For the Gaffney Indians, the upper state champs, Coach Mark Huff has his starting five looks. It looks like this, Dominique Byers, Deshaun Dawkins, and Josh Corey, the three guards, Quinshaw Davis and Chase Smith your two forwards. We've got the opening tip-off in what should be an exciting championship matchup here from the Colonial Life Arena when we return to Columbia on the SC HSL Network. We are ready for the opening tip-off here in the Class 4A state championship game. Gaffney and Lexington. A large crowd on hand here at the Colonial Life Arena on the campus of the University of South Carolina. The Gaffney fans right there making the trip down from Cherokee County, South Carolina, near between Rock Hill and Spartanburg. Lexington making the short drive over about 15 miles away, and we are underway. Adrian Wigfall pops a shot for Lexington, misses the mark. And Emerson Phillips, this is going to be one heck of a ball game between Gaffney and Lexington. Identical records at 25-2. and two. Lexington's first trip to the state title game in 10 years. Gaffney became the first 4A team ever to win three straight state titles here in the Palmetto State back from 03 to 05. And Coach John Combs from Ridgeview High School, you're very familiar with both teams. Uh, Gaffney in the upper state playoffs winning over easily to get here to the championship game. They're a little bit taller than Lexington, but both teams very fast on offense and defense. Well, they're both extremely fast. Gaffney started off here at their uh, patented man defense. Lexington on offense. That starting five, Burns, Roland, Wigfall, Hendren, and Jurgensen. And the foul called quickly on Josh Corey, one of the top players in the state of South Carolina wears jersey number 12, 6'1", senior for Mark Huff's Gaffney Indians. Coach Huff has been in the game for 20 years at Gaffney High School, and each and every year he comes up with a nickname for his team. The nickname this year for the Gaffney Indians, the Finishers. And Gaffney comes up with a big rebound there. No score just underway in this championship tilt between Gaffney and Lexington. There's well, it was almost a steal by Adrian Wigfall. Wigfall, the senior, the other guard, Shaq Rowland, the sophomore. David Burns also plays that role as well. And he is a shutdown defender, Emerson Phillips, David, Byrne, David Burns, number two in the front court for Lexington. Burns stirs the drink for this Lexington team. He's played big in the last three playoff rounds, and of course, Shaq Rowland had 34 in a playoff win earlier during these playoffs over Berkeley, and we've got a Gaffney turnover here. The crowd here, gentlemen, is remarkable. You mentioned better than 10,000 here, Birch, for this ball game, and it is a terrific atmosphere for high school basketball. Wig Falls gonna dish it over to Hendren. Hendren, six-footer, sinks it, and Lexington draws first blood. And Coach Combs, you've got to watch out for Hendren. If he gets warmed up, he can drop 20 in a heartbeat. He sure can. That's a, he, he got that basket by putting the ball on the floor. He's more known as a three-point shooter, so that's not a good sign for Gaffney. And a quick steal by Lexington, but that trapping defense for Gaffney. Burns will break the defense over to Hendren for a three. Nails it! Corey Hendren, the 6'5 senior, with all five points in this championship game, 6.07 left first period. Hendren with five, the Wildcats with five, and those cat crazies from Lexington High School going bananas. They have one of the better student sections in high school basketball here in South Carolina, and the Gaffney fans 
a great contingent on hand from Cherokee County as well. Rebound goes to Shaq Rowland, who drives up court. Right-handed dribble now down low to Jurgensen. He can't find the basket. Rebound gathered in by the Gaffney Indians. And that's Dawkins on the prowl. Left-hander blocked by Jurgensen. And quickly Wickfall up the court. Left-handed scoop shot inside. No go. And Gaffney up and down. Very athletic start to this first period of action. It's 5-0. Lexington on top of Gaffney. And Coach Gomes, what have you seen so far? Well, I, I've seen uh, Lexington right now in their matchup zone. When they're not getting up and down, both teams are being kind of patient. But I expect this game to get up and down and transition. Both teams want to do it. Lexington, a lot of people have the idea Lexington doesn't want to get up and down. They're more than capable of playing at a high pace. That's Dawkins working it up top to Corey. Josh Corey, 6'1", senior. Had an ankle injury earlier in the season. They thought he might miss a playoff game or two, but he battled through the pain, and he takes a big jumper there. He can certainly elevate Emerson when he goes for the jump shot. Just didn't get his shoulders squared to the basket on that attempt. Yeah, he's an incredible shooter. Had a chance to see him last week at the Bilo Center in Greenville, the upper state championship win over Easley, and he went for 23 points in that game and a wide array of jump shots connected during that game by Josh Corey, headed to Wofford to play basketball. Roland misses the straightaway three for Lexington. And Dawkins runs in to Shaq Roland there. And it should be a blocking foul against the sophomore Shaq Roland. 6-2 for Coach Bailey Harris. Bailey Harris in that legendary towel, Coach Combs. It goes with him everywhere he goes. Yeah, unfortunately, we've seen it a few times over at Ridgeview. Uh, Bailey's one of the coaching legends in South Carolina. Been around that Lexington program for a long time. Has a state championship ring. And has his Wildcats back in the title hunt. Dawkins up top over to Corey. Top of your screen. Corey back to Dawkins. 2-3 zone for Lexington. Dawkins takes a six-foot floater and makes it. First points of the game for the Indians. It's a 5-2 Lexington lead. Adrian Wigfall. Left-handed triple. Spins to the lane. And can't find the shot. And Gaffney comes down with a rebound, a big rebound by Chase Smith, the 6'2 senior. Wonderful atmosphere here at the Colonial Life Arena for the tip-off of the weekend of champions. Yeah, folks who follow high school sports in the Palmetto State know that Gaffney travels well. They have been to Columbia so many times over the years, not only for basketball championships, but particularly for football they always bring a big crowd, but the Lexington student section alone is taking up the entire end zone seating area behind the goal that Gaffney's shooting on right now. I mean, everybody in Lexington is at the Colonial Life Arena tonight. The turnout is amazing. I don't know if I've ever seen a student section at a state championship better than what it is right now. A wonderful crowd on hand. They had tickets for sale prior to the game at the schools. Gaffney and Lexington, I understand from the high school league office today, both sold nearly 2,000 tickets during the week. And we have a capacity crowd on hand here at the Colonial Life Arena. 5-2 score, Lexington and Gaffney. Birch, Antley, Emerson Phillips, and John Combs, the head coach at Ridgeview High School, with you here on the SCHSL Network. All eight championship games available on the South Carolina High School League Network this weekend. Gaffney with possession. Into the ball game now. Michael Wright, the sophomore. Down low to LJ Peak, number 34. He's an eighth grader. That's Peak with the ball, drives in. Can't find the bucket. And a foul underneath the basket on Lexington. That's Alex Lale, who just checked in, the 6'1 senior. And Emerson Phillips, if you are in the eighth grade and you are on a 4A varsity team, you've got to have some skills. That's right, and you are beyond your years physically and mentally, and Pete can play. Birch, 14 points in the win over Easley last weekend. Corey dropping the bomb from way downtown for Gaffney. Five points now for the Indians, five for Lexington. So Corey with a big three-pointer to tie this ball game up. That's Burns working into the lane. Pops it outside to Hendren. Hendren 
over to Shaq Rowland. Rowland drives in and scores. Hanging shot for Shaq Rowland, and he can elevate as well for the Lexington Wildcats. Dawkins, Rashawn Dawkins handling the basketball over to Wright. Michael Wright for Gaffney. Now Josh Corey. Down low to Dawkins. Bottom of your screen. They'll work it inside to LJ Peak. Peak moved his feet and is going to be whistled on the travel for number 34, LJ Peak. 6'3, 8th grader. This is one part of the game. Lexington's got to be careful. Um, Gaffney's putting that press on him. Brandon Adams brings it down court for Lexington across the timeline over to Burns. Burns drives in left elbow. And he's going to pick up the blocking foul. That's Corey. Now we've got to start watching out. Emerson Phillips, Josh Corey, that should be his second foul. Certainly don't want to get him into foul trouble if you're Gaffney head coach Mark Hoff. And, you know, Corey physically is not very imposing at just six foot one, but he, he, the way he is able to score the basketball, not only can he penetrate the lane, he can shoot jumpers from all sorts of angles and being off balance. He's a terrific shooter. Coach Combs, you said one of the best you've seen at the high school level. No question. Big block by Shaq Rowland. Swats it away, but right back into the hands of the Gaffney Indians. Dawkins at the top of the perimeter. Corey wants a three. Front rim, no good. Rebounds there for Wright. Put back misses right side of the square. i tell you, one of the keys for Lexington tonight is not to give up offensive rebounds like they did just right there. That's one thing that they're going to have to be able to keep Gaffney off the boards if they want to win tonight. And that's what uh, Wright brings to the table for Gaffney. He certainly doesn't look to score. He's kind of a garbage man. He sets a lot of screens. He cleans up the glass. And by and large, he tries to set up his teammates. I like the role that Michael Wright plays in this Gaffney offense. He, he, again, he's not looking to score. He's a very unselfish player, but he gets quality minutes coming off the bench for head coach Markov. And just a sophomore. Michael Wright at the line. Second of two shots here. Lexington with a one-point lead. And it's a tie game again, seven apiece, as Lexington will inbounds. And I say he's a garbage player. I mean that in the best way possible. He sets a lot of screens. He's a good defender. Doing the little things for Gaffney. Look at Burns drive down the court. Behind the back dribble. Lay-in is not there. And Gaffney cleans up the rebound. Tried to get it up ahead to Smith. But inside the Shans and knocked away by Jurgensen. Matt Jurgensen. Basketball in his veins. His father played for the University of South Carolina back in the early 1980s. Coach Combs, I got to believe uh, Jurgensen at 6'8", that length in the lane may present some problems that Gaffney hasn't seen. They certainly didn't see it last week against Easley. Uh, no, no, they did not. He, he's a big player. There's a big three from the junior Zavata Shands for Gaffney. And now Gaffney with a three-point lead, 10-7 to seven, as Wigfall brings it down court. Wigfall over to Adams, now to Burns at the top of the perimeter. Burns being guarded by Wright. Jurgensen fighting down low. They get it to him. Jurgensen spins. And it's going to be a turnover for the Wildcats. Moved his feet in the paint to Gaffney basketball. As you see Gershon Dawkins, the 5'11 junior, bring it across the timeline with a left-handed dribble. Being guarded by Burns. Dawkins backs away. Wants to set that offense. Right, left, dribble. Works into the lane, and Jurgensen is there to disrupt this shot. But Gaffney right back on the boards, and a foul going against Adrian Wigfall for the Wildcats. You absolutely got to keep Gaffney off the boards. They're one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the state. Uh, that's something Lexington's going to have to do a better job of. So that will put... Gershon Dawkins, the junior at the line, misses the front end of the two-shot opportunity. Substitution now for Lexington as Hendren checks back in for Jurgensen. Good look at Dawkins here. The 5'11 junior led Gaffney with 24 in that victory over Easley in the Upper State title game last week. Scored 11 of those in the fourth quarter when Gaffney pulled away. Rebound goes out of bounds to Gaffney. As you saw, L.J. Peak. The big eighth grader battling underneath the basket. Number 34, L.J. Peak, 
6'3", goes to a different school than the rest of his teammates. He's still in middle school, Emerson. You know his game will improve as this young man gets older, being only an eighth grader. My question is, will the haircut improve? The haircut needs a little work. The game's in pretty good shape. Got the red locks going as Martin <laughs> Huff wants a timeout. We'll keep it right here at the Cordial Life Arena. 10-7, to seven, score Gaffney on top. And Coach Combs, uh, the first period moving by very quickly as these two teams have gone up and down the court. You know, they're, they're going up and down, but it's at a good pace for Lexington as well. I mean, it's not an overly high-scoring game. It's not like the girls' game was uh, starting off. Gaffney and Lexington fighting for the championship trophy. There's a good look at head coach Bailey Harris for Lexington High School as Mark Huff for Gaffney breaks the huddle. And you know, puts his players back on the court. That's one interesting thing about Gaffney this year is that they have won games that have been high scoring. They have won games that are in the 40s. They can beat you either way. And there's the eighth grader. Inbound lob to LJ Peak who puts it in and puts Gaffney on top by five. 12 to 7 as the first period expires. We've got more action from the Colonial Life Arena when we return to Columbia here on the SCHSL Network. We are ready for second period action from the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. Gaffney with a five point lead. 12 to 7 over Lexington as Corey and Gaffney on offense. Lexington. Showing his own defense as Corey is going to move to his left now over to Smith. Smith dumps it to his right to Shans. Now back up top to Corey who drives in, elevates, misses front rim, but a foul is going to be called on Adrian Wigfall. And that is his second infraction. Actually, it's on Jurgensen, 55. So that's his first foul. And that sends Josh Corey. The senior to the line. Maybe that's two on Jurgensen. So now Bailey Harris is going to have to make a decision about his big man, 6'8", Jurgensen, the senior, clogging up the lane with that length. But that time he got a piece of Josh Corey. Corey at the line. Corey misses the second end. As quickly up the court goes Shaq Rowland. Gets into the lane and switches sides and makes the basket. Shaq Rowland showing his speed from one end to the court to the other. And it is a 13-9 Gaffney lead now. It's Corey gets it over to Wright. Wright being guarded by Rowland. Over to Shans. Now they get it inside to Smith. Right-hander is there from three feet away. Great job by Smith to get some open space in the paint and make the two-pointer. Burns loses the handle, and that's going to be a violation against Lexington. Turnover to Gaffney as Gaffney will bring in a substitution now from Shad Davis will check back in as Chase Wright or Michael Wright rather goes back to the bench Coach Combs Lexington led this game 5 to nothing in the first minute but now they're struggling offensively only 4 points since well they've had a turnover recently and they're just not looking comfortable they've missed a couple of easy ba baskets early on in transition which is the pace Gaffney wants that is Shans with the basketball up top to William Smith the junior Shans being guarded by Burns. Now over to Corey. Corey faked the three. Robs it over to his teammate. Now cross court to Shans. Shans wants the three. Bangs it home. I tell you, this is a big bonus for Gaffney. He's not known as a great three-point shooter, but to get two threes from him early on, is that's been real big for Gaffney. Right. So Bonta Shans, his second trifecta, 18-9. Gaffney leads it by nine points as the official having some words with Bailey Harris for Lexington on the other end of the court. Shans didn't score in the last round, Burt, so that early three from him is a big boost for Gaffney. Burns heads down court to Jurgensen. Jurgensen partially blocked, gets his own rebound, and a nice job by Gaffney underneath the Lexington board. But Jurgensen will be going to the line as he was fouled. And that was a great exchange down there, Coach, underneath that Lexington basket. But Jurgensen wins it and goes to the line. Well, Jurgensen does a great job down there. He's got uh, great genes for it. And he, if for Lexington, they need him to score down there when he gets those opportunities. Jurgensen, a senior, stands in at 6'8". And connects on the second. 
Okay, we're going to see a little zone trap here out of Lexington, see how Gaffney handles it. Into the hands of Quinshaw Davis. Davis being double teamed, cross court pass. There's another three, air ball, but Gaffney is there for the putback. William Smith, the six foot junior, has it. And Gaffney has a 10 point advantage, 20 to 10, over the Wildcats of Lexington in this 2010 Class 4A state championship game from a packed Colonial Life Arena. Birch Antley, Emerson Phillips, Coach John Combs from Ridgeview High School. As David Burns will go to the line now. Technical foul on Gaffney. Apparently, the officials didn't like the way one of the Gaffney players grabbed the ball away after that last whistle. And they got Gaffney for the tech. And David Burns drains both shots. That may give him a little bit of confidence there, get a couple of points going for him. He looked a little nervous early. So Shaq Rowland will inbounds, backcourt to Burns. Burns being guarded by Josh Corey for Gaffney. To his right, will drive in, right-hander, bounces up and in. So four consecutive points just like that for David Burns, the senior guard for Lexington. Cuts into that Gaffney lead. It's a six-point Indian advantage now. Josh Corey up at the top, left of your screen. Dishes it down to Smith, back to Corey. Gaffney very patient along that perimeter with their passing. Lexington comes up with the rebound and quickly Adrian Wigfall down court, drives in, can't get it to fall, and Gaffney comes up with the defensive rebound as Corey brings it across the timeline on Burns. Left-handed dribble for Josh Corey. Gaffney very patient along that perimeter. His own defense for Lexington. Baseline drive. And we've got a foul underneath. It's going to go against the Wildcats. And that's going on Corey Hendren. Substitutions coming in now for both teams. As for Lexington, number 12, Brandon Adams jogs onto the court. L.J. Peake is back in for Gaffney along with Rashawn Dawkins. First of two, rattles in for Davis, the 6'3 sophomore. Gaffney up now by seven. Lexington's now got to get ready for that press on the make here of Gaffney. This is the second in. Lane violation. violation call against Shaq Rowland. So, deja vu now for Quinshad Davis. He'll get another opportunity. Five minutes left to play in this first half. 21-14, Gaffney on top. And he makes the most of the second chance. And drains it. Burns will bring it up court quickly now for Lexington. Behind the back dribble. Drives in. Right-hander in and out. Gaffney basketball. And Gaffney will move down the court. Across the timeline goes for Sean Dawkins. Dawkins over to Corey. Fakes the three. Now pops another one. Nails it. Josh Corey, another three-pointer. Puts Gaffney on top now, 25-14. Adrian Wigfall quickly to the basket. Put back is there for Brandon Adams and the Wildcats of Lexington. Gaffney is going to have to get back on defense quickly, Coach. They most, they most certainly need to quickly. I mean, Lexington's got great athletes as well down there. Shaq Rowland and Wigfall, they do a great job. Dawkins gathers it in for Gaffney over to Smith, bottom of your screen. Smith, left-handed dribble, floats to his left. Now back to Dawkins. Dawkins looking for help, gets it up to Corey. Corey sets the offense. Back over to Dawkins. Dawkins being guarded by Adams. Patient play right now for Gaffney with that 25-16 lead. Stripped away by Adrian Wigfall in the Lexington Wildcats, and he quickly dishes it over to Burns. Wants a three, puts it up. No good. Rebound goes to L.J. Peak. And the Gaffney Indians, 342 left, first half action. Smith is going to work it down low, baseline. Ball gets away, but Dawkins is there for Gaffney. Between the leg dribble, now a 12-footer. Not there, but Gaffney gets the rebound, and the stick back is good for Quinshad Davis. And Coach 
Coach Bailey Harris wants a timeout for the Lexington Wildcats. Emerson 27-16, Gaffney. Gaffney's not even that tall. They don't have a lot of size, but they just outwork you on the glass. Coach Combs, they're getting in there on the offensive end now, and if they continue to get second and third chance points, they're going to be tough to take down tonight. Well, there's a reason why they're 25-2. One of them is they're a great offensive rebounded team. You know, I think height is some degree overrated. If you've got heart and you go after it hard, which Gaffney players do, they can get you some points. Some of their best offense is offensive rebounding. 27-16, Gaffney on top in front of a wonderful crowd here at the Colonial Life Arena, and they're are being treated to some outstanding high school basketball. Yeah, I could be mistaken, but this could be the largest crowd to witness a high school basketball game in South Carolina since uh, Eau Claire and LR squared off across the street at the old Carolina Coliseum back in the late 80s. Now those were always sellouts and always a lot of fun. Watching Eau Claire go at Lower Richland. Burns will bring it up court between the leg dribble for the Lexington Wildcats. Now takes a breather at the top of the key. Floats over to his left. Burns on the right-handed dribble now to his left hand. Gives it off to Roland. Burns is that field general on the court for Lexington. He is that leader of that offense. Puts all the pieces into place. As Roland goes up top and to the ground, fouled on the play. So Shaq Roland will go to the line. Shaq Roland, the quarterback for the Lexington Wildcats football team. Got two wonderful football players in that rotation for Lexington showing off their speed. Roland, the quarterback, Adrian Wigfall, a running back. Yeah, Coach Combs, you know, Lexington is doing a good job getting to the rim. They just have not had all their shots fall from in close, but they're getting good looks. They have got some very good looks. They just now need to finish some of those. Roland makes the second shot as the ball sails out of bounds off the hands of Smith for Gaffney. So Shaq Roland will inbounds at half court for the Lexington Wildcats. 27-18, Gaffney on top. Under three minutes to play here in the first half of action from the Colonial Life Arena. Shaq Roland, dribble, drive, hangs, has it. Shaq Roland showing his elevation and picks up two easy points in the paint. It's a seven-point Indian lead as they'll slow down the pace. Top of the perimeter. Calling out the signal is Deshaun Dawkins, the 5'11 junior. David Burns on defense for Lexington. Now over to Davis and quickly back to Dawkins. And they try to work it inside. Pass is intercepted by Shaq Roland, who runs into Hendren and travels in the process. So ball back to Gaffney. It's real hard to throw in between a zone like that. Gaffney needs to be careful of doing that. See Coach Bailey Harris on the far sideline for the Lexington Wildcats. That blue towel draped over his shoulder. And Gaffney will inbounds from beneath their basket. Dershawn Dawkins will pull the trigger. Swatted out of bounds by Wigfall, so Dawkins will do it again for Gaffney. Bailey Harris pleading his case there. Up. A bit of a questionable call there and a tough break for Lexington after they thought they had forced a turnover. Dawkins handles the basketball with just over two minutes to play. Dawkins sets the offense, puts it in motion, tries to pick up the screen. Dawkins floats into the lane and has the two. And that's his game. That's his game. He likes to drive. He hits those runners in the lane. And when he gets doubled, when he penetrates, he'll lay it off inside. Three-pointer for Lexington, in and out, right to the hands of Gaffney, and Quinshad Davis cleans the backboard. Driving in, William Smith, the junior, with a nice little leaner to put Gaffney on top by 11 now, 31 to 20, a minute and a half left to play here in the second period. Smart move by Coach Mark Huff taking Josh Corey out with uh, two fouls. Try not to pick up his third here before the end of the second quarter. Corey has been quiet here in the second period. Gaffney's going to be called to the quick foul here. That's going to go against Smith. William Smith, the junior, number 24, for the Gaffney Indians. You know, as a coach, you always hate to get a foul like that so far away from the opposing basket, especially when you're putting them on the free throw line. 
And that puts your best shooter for Lexington at the free throw line. And David Burns already has knocked in two attempts and makes his third. David Burns, good looking shot from that young man, Emerson. Burns is a player who averaged 11 a game during the year, but he's averaged 20 over the last three Lexington playoff victories. So he's been one of the keys to this run to the Colonial Life Arena for the Lexington Wildcats. High basketball IQ for Burns and an outstanding leader on and off the court for the Lexington Wildcats. Smith dribbles into double coverage, now gets it down low to the big man. In and out, Gaffney's put back is there for Smith. William Smith battling on the boards and another two for Gaffney. Quickly they press on defense and Shaq Rowland is gonna pick up the foul from Quinshad Davis. Rowland is so fast on the dribble. Well, you can talk about Shaq Rowland in practice before you play him, but until you play somebody of his caliber of athlete, it's, it's something tough to prepare for. And only a sophomore, so. More good things to come out of that young man in jersey number three, Shaq Rowland. Misses the front end. Rebound goes to Gaffney with a minute four left to play in the first half. And Gaffney on top by 11. With the basketball, Dershawn Dawkins. They get over to Shans and inside to Chase Smith. Back outside. Dawkins fakes the three. Covered up by Wigfall. Gaffney doesn't get enough credit for being a good, patient offensive team. I mean, they're doing a great job. They haven't forced too many shots here. Another fake of the three. Dawkins dribble, pulls away, goes in left. Now out to right, or to Smith, and he puts up a shot, no good. And the rebound and stick back is there for Quinshawn Davis, 6'3", sophomore, doing the work down low. Roland quickly back for Lexington. Hendron gets the loose ball rebound. Spinning jumper is not there, but he drew the foul from Chase Smith. Lexington will go to the line here, but they have got to be frustrated on the other end of the floor. Coach Bailey Harris is watching Gaffney settle for a lot of outside shots, and Gaffney has not shot him particularly well from outside tonight, but Gaffney has been able to pound the offensive glass, particularly on the backside. Last trip down, Quinshaw Davis able to clean up a miss off an outside jumper. Yeah, the offensive rebounds are going to Gaffney right now, and that's a big reason why they are enjoying this 35-23 lead. As you see, Hendren on the line for Lexington. And that one is good. So just under 18 seconds left, and Gaffney can play for the last shot of the half here as they get it to the big eighth grader peak. Corey, their sharpshooter on the bench. Dawkins drives in. Now over to Shan. Shan's into the hands of Hendren. And Burns is going to pull up, put up a full court shot that is not there. So the first half comes to a close. And Gaffney enjoying a 35 24 point lead over Lexington. We've got second half action when we return to a packed Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina. This is the SC HSL Network. We are getting ready for second half action here at the Colonial Life Arena on the campus of the University of South Carolina in beautiful downtown Columbia. Hello, everybody. I'm Birch Antley, joined by Emerson Phillips and John Combs, the head coach at Ridgeview High School. And Emerson Phillips, Mark Huff, the head coach for the Gaffney Indians. He has a nickname every year for his teams. This year's nickname, The Finishers. We'll see in the final 16 minutes if the finishers will be hoisting the trophy or if Lexington can uh, climb back from this hole that they're in, trailing 35-24. That's what, you know, this crowd of about 12,000, we figure, uh, has turned out to see. And, you know, it's fascinating to me that Gaffney is winning this game tonight with a completely different cast of characters in, in some of the smaller, lesser roles. You know, obviously Josh Corey is there, but Quinshot Davis had six points in the second quarter. And Gaffney's got two players that have combined for 12 points that didn't score a single point in the last round. That's Javante Shans and Willie Smith. So a lot of contributions, a complete team effort in the first half from Gaffney. And Coach Combs here in the second half. Lexington, as we see Shaq Rowland picking up an easy bucket there. Lexington, they're going to have to do a better job rebounding the basketball. Well, Lexington gave up 12 offensive boards, and 
Gaffney enjoys a 15 to five on second chance points. There you go, and that's why Gaffney has that lead, 35-26. Long range shot is not there, and Shaq Rowland fights for the rebound right into the hands of Hendren for Lexington. Back over to Rowland. Right-handed dribble, kicks it out to Burns, fakes the three. Now over to Hendren, wide open. Hendren has it! Hendren. Corey Hendren! He's played well tonight. He's got two threes in the ball game. He's done some good things defensively in terms of denying the post-entry pass. Hendren bringing his A game to the Colonial Life Arena. Corey fakes the three, now puts one up. Not there, too short, but there you go. Offensive rebound to Gaffney. In and out shot, though, for Dominique Byers and into the hands of Jurgensen and the Lexington Wildcats as Burns brings it across the timeline. He wants a three, puts it up, bounces out, rebound goes to Gaffney. Dershawn Dawkins cleans the board for the Indians, almost has his pocket picked, but drives in the lane and puts one up over Burns for Lexington. Gaffney on top now, 37-29. Jurgensen back to Wigfall, and he has it stripped away. Corey pushes it up court for Gaffney. Fighting inside is Davis. Davis has his pocket picked. And again, Lexington on the move. Burns all the way to the hole and lays it in. A terrific take to the hole by David Burns, number two in a black Lexington jersey. Maintained his composure. He didn't get out of control, and he kept his body under control and was able to finish that play. And that has riled up the cat crazies. Look at those fans, that student section from Lexington High School. And Coach Combs, the players certainly have to feed off that energy that they get from the fans. Oh, no question. I mean, these fans are outstanding. The great, I mean, the the cat crazies, they they would make the Cameron crazies proud. Gaffney will inbounds. LJ Peak into the rotation now, the eighth grader. Gives it up to Dershawn Dawkins. Dawkins fights through the defense and brings it into front court. Over to Corey, top of your screen. Corey, cross-court pass. There's a three, no good. Into the hands of Lexington. Byers can't find it. And Burns goes down again. Coast to coast for David Burns, the six-foot senior. And he has Lexington within four. And a timeout on the court, and we'll take one here as well from the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. It's Gaffney 37, Lexington 33 on the SC HSL Network. Emerson Phillips, what a second half run the Lexington Wildcats have put together to cut into this Gaffney lead. It's a four-point Indian advantage now, 37-33. Rowland's got 12, Burns and Hendren with 10 apiece, and Burns has been able to get to the hole the last couple of times down, some fast break opportunities, and Hendren's got two threes in the game. Dawkins on the handle for Gaffney, floats over to his left, gives away to Smith. Smith wanted to go down low, but back to Dawkins. No call. Dawkins wide open three. In and out. Rebound to Wickfall and Lexington. Now Burns again. Up court for the Wildcats. The senior floor general for Lexington. Over to Shaq Rowland. Bottom of your screen. Being guarded by LJ Peak. Coach Combs, one of the few times tonight we've seen Gaffney one shot and done. Yeah, I mean, that's big for uh, Lexington to be able to only get them to have one shot. Shaq Rowland. Dribble drive. Left-hander is there. For Shaq Rowland, the sensational sophomore for Lexington. It's a two-point Gaffney advantage. Lexington going after it near sideline. Rowland trying to make a great play there defensively, but out of bounds to the Indians. you got to love this action tonight. You know, no scholarships, no million-dollar contracts in this building tonight. Nothing but love of the game and playing for the name on the front of the jersey. Bodies flying all over the floor trying to win the state championship tonight. Pete goes strong to the basket but misses the shot and rebound goes to Lexington. Lexington leading in rebounding here in the second half. Wickfall drives to the basket. The Roland left-hander, good. Shaq Roland, easy points in the paint. And Lexington has tied this championship game. It's 37 apiece. Gaffney on the smooth move. Smith, the peak is there. LJ Peak, the eighth grader, playing in a state championship game in Class 4A here in the Palmetto State of South Carolina. Hendren wants a three. 
Right rim, no good. Rebound to Lexington. Wigfall has his shot blocked. And quickly up court goes the Indians, but almost stripped away by Shaq Rowland, and he's going to be called with the foul. And that might be number three on Shaq Rowland. We'll have to get the indication from the scorer's table. And a bucket by Peak last trip down for Gaffney ended a 13-2 Lexington run. They trailed by 11 at halftime, and they have quickly erased most of that deficit. Smith inbounds to Dawkins. Dawkins wants to slow down the pace and set to his offense. Dawkins now over to Shans. Shans, dribble drive, hangs, has it. Zavana Shans made two three balls in the first half. Here's a big steal by Gaffney and Dawkins, and the lay-in easy basket for Quinshaw Davis. Well, Lexington needs to get another person down here to help them get the ball in bounds. Rowland beats the defense, brings it into front court. Rebound goes to Davis and Gaffney. Gaffney quickly on the move. Bounce pass inside, and there's the bucket for Shans. And Gaffney has climbed ahead now, 45-37. Another rebound for the Indians, quickly up court. Smith inside to Dawkins. Dawkins lays it in. And Lexington's going to have to call a timeout here. Bailey Harris wants to talk to his players. We will take a break as well. It's a 10-point Gaffney lead. We'll have more action in the third when we come back to Columbia here on the SC HSL Network. This game was tied moments ago, but Gaffney has put together a nice run, and they have the 10-point lead, 47-37 to here in the third period. Emerson. And this is an instant replay of a similar situation in last week's semifinal victory over Easley. Gaffney jumped on Easley early, led 22-8 to at the end of one. Easley scrapped its way back in, tied it up in the middle of the third, and then Gaffney went on a 10 to nothing run in the blink of an eye to move back out in front and regain control of the ball game. Let's see if Lexington can find it within them but come back again. They still have plenty of time. Hendren on the handle for Lexington. Gives it away to Roland. Roland wants the three. It's there. Shaq Roland from the far sideline nails it home. It's a seven-point Gaffney lead now. I'll tell you what, Quinshaw Davis really keyed that Gaffney 10-0 run that was just ended by the rolling three. Davis with a couple interior scores, rebounds, and a one steal as well. Nice turnaround jumper from six feet away by Bo Ray, the 6'4 senior. Here's a dribble drive for Adrian Wigfall, left-hander. Lay-in for Lexington, 49-42. That was a... Great follow after the wonderful turnaround jumper by Bo Ray, who just checked in for the first time in this ballgame. Just can't say can't say enough about the Gaffney bench to this point. You know, they've got 14 points out of three kids that failed to score in the last round. Shans, Smith, and now Bo Ray. I don't think Bo Ray even got in the Gaffney game until the very end last week. So Markoff is using his bench extremely well, and these bench players are making the most of their opportunities. And he's going back to the bench, bringing in Michael Wright, the 6'2 sophomore. He's really the table setter for Gaffney off that bench. Very versatile player. Has a lot of weapons in his pocket. Wright going to kick it back out to Shans. Shans floats to his right, now back to his left, over to right again. Bo Ray fighting down side, uh, inside. Corey's going to fake the three, now pops one from 21 feet. No good. But look at there. Michael Wright coming up with a rebound. One of the bench players for Gaffney. And they maintain possession. Wright, dribble, drive, hangs. No good. But Gaffney right there for the offensive rebound and drawing the foul is Quinshaw Davis. Quinshaw Davis, it seems like this entire game has been in the right place at the right time. He's just out working people. Coach Combs, I mean, he's getting position in the paint. They're not boxing him out, and he's going after rebounds. He's trying to help Gaffney win this state championship. I haven't seen him get boxed out once tonight. He's He's been down there all by himself. And that Gaffney lineup undersized. 
compared to Lexington, especially when they have the 6'8 center Jurgensen right, in the Dave, rotation. Davis is 6'3, Jurgensen 6'8. That can be an issue when you play a zone defense. Sometimes people slip through the uh, cracks. They've got uh, Hendren watching Davis right now, but and you know, obviously the, the quickness of Quinshaw Davis a major factor in his performance tonight. Shans gets it inside to Ray. Now back out to Shans for three. In and out. Lexington clears the board. Shaq Rowland up court to Wigfall. Quickly closed in, and Bo Ray is there to knock it away. But Lexington maintains possession. Burns to Rowland. Wants a three. Shaq Rowland has it again. And he's got to be over 20 points in this championship game. And a foul away from the basket. It's going to be called on Ray. I got 20 points unofficially for Shaq Rowland now. He had 10 somewhat quietly in the first half, but he's exploded here in the third quarter with 10 more. And Lexington is going to keep the basketball here. They've cut that lead to four. 49, 45, 37 seconds left on the clock here in the third. Burns going to work up top to Wickfall. Now down low to Hendren. Spots up and has it from six feet away. Right block. Well, this is just a great high school basketball game here. A very interesting third quarter with different runs that both teams have made. 12 points for Hendren. And a travel on Gaffney. Ball now back to Lexington, and Lexington can tie or take the lead with a three with 20 seconds left. David Burns will bring it up court. Now passes cross court to Wigfall. And Burns brings it across the timeline. David Burns working far sideline. Eight seconds left. He wants the last shot of the third. Drives in, and he draws the foul. And that might be on Corey. If so, Corey was in foul trouble in the first half, had to sit down for a large majority of the second period. You know, gentlemen, I believe Bailey Harris, the Lexington coach, put Brandon Adams in the game. Briefly, early in the in the first half, he put him in. But except for the, the brief amount of time that Adams was in, I believe Lexington's starting five has played the whole way. And we know Mark Huff has played, goodness, he's played nine or ten players already tonight. And you got to wonder if fatigue, fresh legs for Gaffney, fatigue for Lexington might be a factor in the fourth quarter. But Lexington now has rallied from 11 down at halftime to knock this baby at 49, just our second tie in a ball game. Outstanding high school basketball game here in the 4A state championship of South Carolina. Half court shot off the backboard. The third period comes to the clo- to a close. We're heading to the final stanza to find out who will carry the trophy back home. We've got fourth period action when we return to Columbia and the Colonial Life Arena here on the SCHSL Network. We are tied at 49. Final period of action here from the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. Birch, Antley, Emerson Phillips, and John Combs on the call. Gaffney and Lexington tied at 49. Gaffney basketball to start the final period. We haven't heard official attendance numbers tonight, but you got a good look at the crowd. We're guesstimating around about 12,000. Lexington comes up with a loose ball. Into the hands of David Burns. Burns, dribble, drive. Has it. David Burns. Coast to coast again for the senior guard, and he has put the Wildcats on top now. Burns. 51-49. Burns didn't score in the first quarter. Burns, he's got 12 points now. Shans drifting to his left, and a travel going against... Deshaun Dawkins, the junior for Gaffney. Lexington on top now by two, just underway here in the fourth period. Lexington inbounds to Burns. Burns, is he going to go coast to coast again? Nope, gets away to Hendren, and Hendren is fouled behind the three-point line. He wasn't in the process of going up for a shot. It was kind of hit in the noggin, so it will not be a, a shooting foul. Lexington's got its first lead since they ran out five to nothing. 
to start this ball game. It's been a long road back for Bailey Harris's club as the Gaffney Indians nation looks on and saying, what happened to our 11-point halftime lead? Shaq Rowland behind the back dribble. Now over to Burns. Burns has Hendrick. Straight away three, no good. Rebound to Gaffney and lead, LJ Peak clears it away. Now up to Corey. Corey has been very quiet here in the second half. Hasn't attempted very many shots. Right, he's, he's only been ball handling. He's only taken a, a one shot, if I'm not mistaken, in the second half. Had seven points in the first half. Hadn't looked to do much in the second half. Shans for three. Zavante Shans. Four threes in this championship ball game for the junior. And he puts Gaffney back on top by one. And on the transition, ball going back to Gaffney. Right in front of those Lexington Wildcat fans and head coach Bailey Harris. Now up court to Josh Corey, the 6'1 senior. For Gaffney, hasn't taken very many shots here in the second half. Had 10 points in the first period. Or actually seven points in the first half. Shans up top to Corey. Corey being guarded by Brandon Adams. Now double team. Now over to wide open Shans for three. In and out left rim. Rebound fought for. Controlled by Lexington. Adams over to Burns. And Burns will bring it across the timeline. Being guarded by Dawkins. Dawkins all over Burns. Burns gets away. Picks up the screen. Gets it back out to Adams. Adams will drive, loses the handle, foul. It's going to be called on L.J. Peak. Adams has gotten some playing time tonight, but I'm fairly certain Bailey Harris is playing six players tonight, Coach Combs, and he's going to dance with what brought him to the state championship game tonight. There's no question about that, but, of course, that's something Gaffney wants. He wants to try to wear down the other team, and it'll be interesting. One note, though, um, Lexington is coached by Bailey Harris, who's a cross-country state championship coach. So these players are going to be in good shape. Yeah, they know how to run, that's for sure. Hendren backs it out. And now into the hands of Adams over to Wigfall. Wigfall hangs in, and he draws the foul, and that is going to be on Corey, too. I think that's going on Josh Corey, and if I'm not mistaken, that's number four on Josh Corey. Good look at the Wildcats bench. Wick falls, first shot in and out. 52-51, Gaffney on top. Just under five and a half minutes to play in the Class 4A State Championship game, 2010 edition in the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. Misses the second, and Peak is there with the rebound for Gaffney. Gaffney with that one-point lead. Josh Corey with the handle. Top of your screen, outside the perimeter. Low pace now for Mark Huff and the Gaffney Indians as Dawkins drives in and gets the hanger. Off the rim, back iron. Three-point Gaffney lead now. David Burns signals the play for the Wildcat offense. They'll set that offense in motion. Wigfall drives in, left-hander, in and out, rebound Gaffney. Three white jerseys all over the rebound there. Dawkins behind the back dribble across the timeline. Hangs from eight feet away. Not there. Offensive rebound. Gaffney fighting underneath the boards and the stick back by the 5'11 junior, Dershawn Dawkins, and another steal by Gaffney. And Dawkins is going to be fouled. In the land of the Giants, Dershawn Dawkins coming up with the rebound and the putback just battling on the boards. And Gaffney winning that fight right now on the offensive glass. It's a question of will. Rebounding is about will. Who wants it the most? And Gaffney has simply outworked Lexington on the glass. Lexington's got a little bit of a size advantage here tonight, a fairly considerable size advantage, but Gaffney has just outquicked them to so many rebounds tonight, and that's the difference in the ball game now that we're you know midway through the fourth quarter. Still time for the Wildcats, though. They've been so resilient all night. Josh Corey... This is the mark on 
his three-point attempt. And Lexington basketball down by five with just under four minutes to play. Jurgensen back in the game for the Wildcats, number 55, the big man, six foot eight. Shaq Rowland spins and moved his feet one too many times there, Coach. Well, you, this is where it comes in. Is there any conditioning issues? Is he tired maybe a little bit? But that was a good clear out play that they run, just too many steps for Shaq. Yeah, rotation basketball for Gaffney, as Emerson has pointed out in various times throughout the broadcast. Gaffney has done a good job of keeping some fresh legs in the ball game. So you have to wonder if Lexington's getting a little bit tired. Shans, three-pointer, not there. Look at Leak. Stripped down the rebound, misses the putback. But again, on the offensive boards, Quinshaw Davis working hard, and he is fouled. Gaffney's just doing an outstanding job on the boards. I, I know we're probably getting very repetitive saying it, but they're just doing a great job tonight. 56-51 score. 3.29 left in this ball game. Opening night of the weekend of champions. All eight championship games being broadcast in their entirety exclusively on the SCHSL network, the official broadcast network of the South Carolina High School League. Second shot finds the bottom of the basket. David Burns quickly up court on the right-handed dribble. Burns over to Hendren for three. Hendren not there. Rebound Jurgensen. Stick back. No. Leak is there for Gaffney. Fighting hard is the young man in the eighth grade. L.J. Peak making his presence known. And you good. can't miss him out there with the red dye in the locks. Yeah, maybe we can get a shot of uh, a peach haircut. And I gave him a hard time about it in the first half. This is absolutely amazing that an eighth grader can step in at a program like Gaffney High School, the first 4A school in the history of our state to win three consecutive state championships. Did that just a few years ago. To be able to step in and contribute, I'm talking quality minutes throughout the playoffs and tonight in, in the state championship game, that is almost unheard of. There's been a few middle school kids that have been able to play at a varsity level over the years, but I can't think of too many of them that have done it in class 4A and done it on a state championship team. Inside again, Gaffney, that's just easy pickings there for Quinshad Davis. High percentage shot, Shaq Rowland. Drives the lane, rebound again goes to Gaffney and LJ Peak, number 34, cleans the glass for the Gaffney Indians. They have an eight point lead now with 2.25 left to play. You'll see Gaffney spread the court here. Lexington's going to have to come out and try to guard them, and it, this has got to work to Gaffney. And they're going to slow it down as Josh Corey drives in, gives it off to Davis right there for the easy bucket inside. Quinshad Davis, 6'3 sophomore. They call the Gaffney Indians the finishers. We'll see if they can bring it home. Miss attempt by Adams drives in and draws the foul. So that's good for Lexington as Adams will go to the line. Brandon Adams, the sophomore, 5'10". For the Lexington Wildcats trailing 61-53 here with two minutes to play. Now Lexington's going to have to think about bringing their own pressure right now or some type of zone trap. They're going to have to turn over Gaffney quickly. Adams makes the shot. Davis will bring it up court. Across to Peak. Peak being double teamed. Gets it down low to Davis. Davis backs in on Rowland. Now back out to Dawkins up to Corey. And now Gaffney will play a little bit of keep away here and work the clock, slow down the tempo. Dawkins dribble drive inside to Davis. Davis lays it in. Well, Nobody there to contest the shot for Davis. Quinshot Davis has had a night to remember tonight. He'll talk about this game for many years to come. He has been outstanding for Gaffney. It's been like an all-you-can-eat buffet under the board for Davis. Long three by Wigfall. He nails it. Adrian Wigfall nails the three. Bailey Harris wants a timeout. 63-57. 
Gaffney on top by six. Coach, that was a huge three by Adrian Wickfall. That is a big three. I mean, it cuts it to a two-possession game, potentially only down six. I mean, the way this game has go and gone and the way that it's gone in the third quarter, it's most certainly not over yet. Is Bailey Harris discussing in his strategy who to foul, when to start giving some fouls to Gaffney to try to get the ball back? Most certainly is. He's probably trying to get them to maybe try to turn the ball over in the backcourt and then maybe fi- uh, foul right away as soon as they get it across half court. Um, because they got to think about fouling pretty soon. You don't want to waste too much time. Emerson, great crowd on hand, and we are seeing a great basketball game from start to finish. Yeah, it's really been a special night. You know, the 4A girls went down to the wire with Goose Creek winning their first state championship in the history of their school, and now Gaffney and Lexington putting on a terrific show for a crowd that we've guesstimated to be about 12,000 here tonight at the premier venue in all of South Carolina. It's been a great night. Dawkins drives in and now backs it up, and he is going to be fouled by Adams. So Adams on the reach-in foul to Dawkins. And Dawkins will go to the line for Gaffney. Gaffney got away with one right there. Mark Huff knows it, but you got to remember this game was tied at 49 at the end of the third quarter. So, you know, Lexington just hit the three prior to the timeout, and it was... Gaffney uh, 14 to 5 in the fourth quarter and I don't think fatigue has been a factor for Lexington. I don't think the depth of the Gaffney bench the fact that they've had fresh legs has been the difference. I just think Gaffney has just been a half a step slower than Lexington getting to the rebounds much of the game. Well you got to also give credit to the Gaffney bench who stepped up and some of them, uh, Shans has hit some big time shots that you know I don't know how much Lexington's talked about them. they're scouting report. And there's an interception for Gaffney up ahead to Leak. Leak misses the dunk, gets his own miss, and puts it back for the two pointer with a big smile on his face. Yep, LJ Peak with the championship smile after that exchange. Roland misses the three, rebound, fought for. He's going to be controlled by Gaffney, out of bounds off of Adrian Wigfall. 39 seconds left on the clock, a 10 point Indian lead. 67-57, Corey, Josh Corey, quickly fouled by David Burns. And this game, if Gaffney indeed wins, which they should with 37.5, it, it, it all went Gaffney's way on the offensive glass. They fought too hard for the rebounds and got too many second and third opportunities on the offensive side to win this ball game and a lot of easy shots down low inside. I agree. Rebounding the difference, and I think uh, a lot of that was Quinshot Davis tonight as we look at the future Wofford Terrier, Josh Corey, who probably didn't have his best game tonight, but he's been, he's done what Gaffney has needed. He did score seven in the first half tonight and really has not looked for his shot in the second half, but I'll take you back to Quinshot Davis, number 14 for Gaffney. Uh, He's been the difference on the glass, and Coach Holmes, you know, he's doing... Uh, Coach Combs, he's doing more than just rebound tonight. He's played good defense, and he's been able to score a lot of interior buckets, most of them off of offensive rebounds for Gaffney. There's no question. I mean, Josh Corey hasn't had to have a a great night tonight because his other teammates have have done a great job um, on the offensive board. And like I said, Shans hits a couple outside shots, so they've done a great job as a team tonight. Yeah, you know, there's an old saying, an old cliche, that a chain is only as strong as the weakest link, and it's hard to identify what Gaffney's weakest link has been tonight. They've been they've been excellent in all phases. Everybody has contributed. They played at least nine people tonight, and everybody has chipped in. Bo Ray on the floor for Gaffney. We've got a timeout. We're going to keep it right here as Gaffney starts their celebration with 20.7 seconds left. They've already gotten the newspapers printed and everything as. The Gaffney Indians will win the 2010 state championship here at the Colonial Life Arena, and they got good play. They, they, they shared the wealth, Emerson, and they got great play off their bench. Yeah, nice move by Bailey Harris at the end of the game here to get his seniors in the ball game. Alex Lale, uh, number 24, along with number 15, Michael Spires. But, you know, the Gaffney ledger is already printed out. Tomorrow's headlines today, and they've made them available here at the Colonial Life Arena. Read all about it. Gaffney Indians, another state championship. Disappointing defeat for Lexington High School. Their first trip to the title game in 10 years, but 
Gaffney just simply better in the fourth quarter tonight and better on the rebounding edge, like we said. So that's the difference in this game tonight. And Gaffney calls itself the school of champions, and they're proving it again tonight. Dribble drive not there for C.J. Miller, the sophomore, into the game for the Gaffney Indians. And you, you really have to feel for David Burns and the Lexington Wildcats. Uh, David Burns, the six-foot senior guard, number two, he played his heart out here tonight and really uh, showed some guts, had a lot of uh, great coast-to-coast drives. And you know that young man is is feeling it right now as his team is going to go down here. But hats off to the Lexington Wildcats for even getting to this place. Now, there's only one team's going to win the state championship this year for Gaffney Indians, but absolutely nothing for Lexington to hang its head tonight. And there you go. The buzzer sounds, and the Gaffney Indians, they are the finishers. They will win the 2010 state championship and take it back proudly to Cherokee County as they defeat Lexington. 71 to 57 in a packed house here at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia. For Coach John Combs, for Emerson Phillips, for our entire crew here on the SCHSL Network, I'm Birch Antley. Congratulations, Gaffney Indians, the 2010 Class 4A state champions. This has been a proud production of the SCHSL Network. <laughs>